The Shadow of Kyoshi, the book where all the answers are given. And we learn that Kyoshi is officially a power bottom and Rangi is a soft top. This, this, this did not go well straight away here. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> you can tell what kind of uh, review this is going to be. Um, it's it's a non spoiler review. Also, just subscribe and hit the notification bell and the like button if you haven't already. Um, but, oh my god, Shadow of Kyoshi was flipping amazing. We have so many answers given in this book. We, we see so many new character dynamics. Oh... Rangshi, the sh official ship name, my one didn't pick, my one didn't work out, so I've bowed to the masses and I've gone with the official ship name, which is Rangshi. Um, there were moments, there were beautiful moments, the whole story as a whole is political intrigue, Fire Nation history, phenomenal. There are things that I wish were answered in this book and I'll get into that a little bit in the end where I talk about some of the slight negatives that I have but as a whole I am excited to get into this. This is of course a non-spoiler. There will be a spoiler review later on where I will be on Antoine Bandelay's channel with fellow YouTubers Antoine, Airsp Prime and hopefully The Objective Geek. I'm not too sure what day that will be coming out yet, but I am very excited for that. But for the non-spoiler review, here we go. Okay, first up, we are getting some new characters in this book and further explorations of Kyoshi as a young avatar. We have a bit of a time skip in that Kyoshi is now 17, nearly 18 years old and has kind of cultivated a sort of persona of her as an avatar in that many people as much of the fandom do feel is that she is a no-nonsense murdery kind of person and as we learn from Kyoshi's internal thought she is really not happy about this persona but gives into it because that is the only way to help try and bring order to the world and I don't really like that we get this sort of straight up look at how the fandom and the avatar world has often looked at Kyoshi as an avatar and having this fully confronted in literally the first chapter from Kiyoshi's perspective. It's just, it was fascinating, I loved it, I enjoyed it. And it just kind of goes to show us learning more about Kiyoshi in this book and how she portrays herself as an avatar. She is still learning. She's only been an avatar for probably about a year now and still doesn't really know what kind of avatar she is or wants to be. So it's kind of, trying to give this persona of confidence and strength when really she doesn't actually know what she's doing or who she wants to be as an avatar. Focusing on trying to continue Yang Chen's legacy of peace throughout the world, which Karuk seemingly screwed up. And yes, I use the word seemingly because we get a lot more information about Karuk in this book and also Yang Chen. And as many people remember the notes that we got from FCE, who I love you, FCE. Love you. I'm going to read all your other books now because these two were phenomenal. But FCE mentioned on his inst on his Insta, no, on his social media about someone named Setso that is spelt. Well, look this, S Z E T O. So I may be pronouncing it wrong, but this turns out to be a Fire Nation avatar, not the one that we were all expecting, which everyone called Avatar Jafar, but another. I won't go too much into that, but we learn a lot about Fire Nation avatars in this book and their connections to the Fire Nation and the Fire Lords, as well as lots of stuff about the Fire Nation as a whole, which was phenomenal world building and history. I just, I am so impressed with what has been included in this book, particularly to do with the Fire Nation and a little bit of the Earth Kingdom, but not as much, which was surprising to me. Now, I knew that this book was mainly going to be about the Fire, the, the Fire Nation, with that being the basic premise, but I thought there would be a little bit more about the Earth Kingdom as a whole, with that being Kyoshi's main area. But I was really intrigued to see more of the Fire Nation and its history, and particularly this exploration of Fire Nation clans. 
Now again, I'm not going to get too much into that, but it's something that is really interesting in the differences between the Fire Nation in Kyoshi's time and the Fire Nation as we know it in Aang and later a little bit of Korra's time. Not too much in Korra because we don't really get much of the Fire Nation in Korra, which is why I was kind of glad that we got a little bit more of the Fire Nation in Kyoshi's story. To see the differences between the Fire Nation then before Sozin ruined everything, but also the lead up to how Sozin could have become the way he is. And it's really, really interesting. And it also shows an interesting dynamic to familial relationships in the Fire Nation. Again, not going to get too much on that, but the characters that we are introduced to within the Fire Nation royal family are the new Fire Lord Zoru and his half brother Chaijin. And that may be pronounced incorrectly. Again, I, I, I'm not going to get all these right, so please do not kill me in the comments. I'm trying my best. But the family relationships really kind of reflect a lot of Ozai and Iroh. And again, not going to go too much. I'm saying that a lot now. But the reflection that we get of sibling relationships, we get a lot of exploration of this in Avatar. We get Zuko and Azula, we get Iroh and Ozai, we get, I can't think of any other siblings in the Fire Nation, I'll move on. But to see a different dynamic and kind of how the Fire Nation regards its royal family and how these this clan system works as well was fascinating world building and specifically on cultural heritages as well in the Avatar universe and I just it was just so fascinating to see more about that as well as the ideas of honour and particularly hair. Now you guys may remember I did a video a while ago about the symbolism of hair and oh my god hair plays so much of a role in this story Oh my, I need to do another one. I think this is where it's going. I'm gonna have to do another symbolism of hair video because this book has opened it up so freaking much. So I'll get to that. To get on to Yun though. Yun is a really interesting character in this book and the way in which his and Kiyoshi's relationship is explored and also interestingly his connection to Karuk. Yun as a character he's just so fascinating. I find him more terrifying in a sense than Jianju because we don't really know why he's doing what he's doing and he is he's basically becoming a political menace in this book. He's causing confusion and conflict but particularly internal conflict for Kiyoshi as well and it's just it's so fascinating to get the side of Kiyoshi not only realizing that she in in comparison to Yun when he was the avatar she doesn't know anything in comparison he had cultivated all these relationships with all these leaders and as Zoro, when she is having her discussions with Zoro, points out, he built a really strong relationship with Yun and even kind of compared them a little bit. So just imagine that you've got this person that wasn't even an avatar who you are being compared to and realizing that you do not stand on par with this person who was, for all intensive purposes, a false avatar. And it's just so fascinating. There is so much internal conflict that Kiyoshi faces. And this is something that I really want to bring up is that her story and her characterization is basically Korra. I think that's what I really love about this book is this avatar exploration that all the avatars, while they are different and while their times in the world are different and lead to different implications, the connections between them are so strong. Kuruk and Kiyoshi have a connection. There's something about them that is, they're both so strong-willed. Yang Chen realizes that the way in which she was the avatar wasn't perfect. And some things that she did led to the things that Kuruk had to face. What Kuruk failed to deal with is what Kiyoshi's having to face. And so on and so forth. Every avatar's actions 
has a conflict and an issue for the next avatar and it's just so interesting and I'm trying not to spoil anything I feel like I may have but hopefully no one realizes what I did I realized after I'd uh, finished recording that um, I hadn't actually said the, the things that I wish were introduced so I'm just gonna at the inners and aside here. Basically, I'm disappointed that they didn't really explore the Earth Kingdom as much and kind of like the Kyoshi as an avatar and her relationship with fixing the Earth Kingdom. I guess probably because we kind of get a little bit of that later on, but I wish we'd gotten a bit more of that. Um, I'm also disappointed that we don't really get anything else about the Flying Opera Company until the very end, and particularly to do with Lao Gay and obviously Kyoshi. Yeah, Kyoshi's immortality that's really not explored at all in this book considering it's mentioned in the first um so I'm kind of really disappointed I suppose the only other thing is that I do slightly wish some of the fight scenes were a little bit better but that's mainly more of a writing technical technique and as well as the defeating of um, the villain in this story uh, I wasn't as it wasn't bad but I wasn't as happy with it but everything else just I think did really well but those are just some things that I really wish had been explored a little bit more at least touched on slightly but I think the thing that I love the most and I admittedly I don't have the book because I've read it all on ebook because the book hasn't arrived yet but um this is this is basically the final bit it's not spoilery but I want to read it to you guys because I think it basically summarizes avatar and avatars as a whole she still had to be careful not to lose her balance and fall. Kiyoshi kept her eyes focused on her difficult path, sometimes stumbling but making sure to catch herself, taking one step at a time. And I think that's what this book basically represents is the journey that avatars take and how everything that they do is judged and there's no way to be perfect and make the right decisions because there'll all be there will always be a mistake that they make. You can't be one hundred percent perfect, even though some people may revile you as being perfect. And I think that's what just I really love about this book, as well as the fact that it is <laughs> Kyoshi and Rangi. Oh my god! I don't. Want, I really didn't want to talk too much about it because I feel like I need to do a whole video about them as well. But Kyoshi and Rangi. Are, oh, some of my favourite parts are relating to these two characters. Their relationship is literally the best relationship in the Avatar world. It's got it's messy, it's ugly, they have moments of being terrible, but that's what makes them perfect, is because they still love each other at the end of the day. I think that kind of ex their their relationship in this book is Avatar. It's not perfect, it's not amazing, it's messy and it can be hurtful sometimes, but at the end of the day, they still do what they do because of love. And that's us as fans. Avatar can be messy, their fandom can be messy, but we still love this world and its characters. And Shadow of Kyoshi is just a fantastic story that brings to light so many things that we can reflect onto this world itself. and and onto the Avatar world. And I think that's why I've really enjoyed this story and I, I can't wait to talk about it non-spoiler, uh, no, spoiler, I mean, uh, with all the other YouTubers that I'll be joining and doing so many theory videos in future also. Oh my God, I'm so excited. But what do you guys think? Try to keep it as non-spoilery as possible in the comment section, but I would love to hear your thoughts on the Shadow of Kyoshi book and the Kyoshi book series as a whole. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And of course, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. And in the description box, check out the links for my social media and my Patreon, where if you want to support me, you can do that there. And of course, go buy the books if you haven't already what are you guys doing this series is incredible but i want to thank you guys so much for watching this video i really do appreciate it kyoshi and rangi forever and for life and i will see you guys next time